For the first time since the pandemic, headlining shows at the CGI Rochester International Jazz Festival will be inside Kodak Hall at Eastman Theater. And the very first one on the festival's opening night is a great one. Guitarist Pat Matheny will bring his show, Pat Matheny Side Eye, to the Eastman Theater. He's with us for a few minutes now, giving us a little preview of it. Pat, thank you so much for joining us. The countdown is on. We're getting really, really close to the festival. How are you feeling uh, starting things off for everyone? I'm really excited. I always look forward to coming up there um, to Rochester. It's been a fantastic audience over the years. And of course, the musical scene there because of the school and everything else has always been just great. So it's really special to get to play there. I'm really looking forward to it. How many times have you uh, been to Rochester for the festival? I'm not exactly sure for the festival, but to Rochester in general, it's, it would be a lot, probably 20 or so over the years. You know, I have been around a long time at this point and uh, have seen, you know, all different kinds of venues all over the place. Um, but for sure, the, for the festival, it's got to be at least the third or fourth time. Wow. All right. So uh, you've launched this side eye is what it's called for this new season. Uh, can you kind of explain what it is? Because it's a little something different. You know, the whole thing of like what to call something has always been a little bit of a puzzle. Like, you know, I mean, I've done so many different kinds of things with so many different kinds of bands and in in pretty much every way. They're all sort of the same, um, you know, a benevolent dictatorship, as I like to call it. But um, in this case, the focus is is a little bit uh unusual for me in the sense that everybody in the band is you know not even just one generation younger than me they're kind of two generations younger and i was the beneficiary of that i started playing professionally when i was about 14 in kansas city where i grew up and i was always around older guys and you know this kind of music really as much as you can study it in school it's really about being on the bandstand with people and learning from them well, your list of accomplishments is very, very long. Your resume is too. Um, let's kind of start from the very beginning. Like you said, you came from a, a musical family and you got a lot of experience at quite an early age. Um, what kind of lit the fire inside of you to uh, start the jazz career? For me, it's just love of music, really. And it's always been very natural for me when I loved something as a fan to want to know how it worked and um you know my older brother brought home a miles davis record when i was about 11 years old i didn't really know that that was any different from you know marching band music or the beatles or whatever it was just music that was on a record that you could play on the record player and you know i loved it right away and also it was fascinating to me like what's going on and um that's kind of the same for me. I don't really think, oh, this is jazz, this is rock, this is classical. It's just music for me. And uh, trying to understand music has been the main thing for me since I was really a little kid. How do you mean understand music? Well, within, you know, kind of all of the different fabrics of existence that we all share, music is unusual. You can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't taste it. But when you walk in a room and there's a band plan or a symphony and it's fantastic, everybody that's sensitive to music responds to that. What is that? You know, what what's going on there? And that's what I mean is that I want to still try to figure that out like what is that 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 does that to me as a listener and then how might i offer that to other people your first album bright size life was released in 1975 um it says you reinvented to tra reinvented traditional jazz guitar for the next generation of players so when you see and hear the change that you created in jazz music now what does that kind of feel like especially coming to this festival where there are going to be so many young musicians and, and up-and-comers well i always thought that was a very very generous statement um and you know at the same time i kind of know what that means in the sense that you know, my trajectory as a player was really built on playing on standards and blues and organ trios and the sort of thing that is straight up and down the tradition of that music. 
And at the same time, there was a big part of me uh, that was like, yeah, but, you know, like what else could it be? And a lot of that had to do with the instrument itself, which had, I don't want to say a second class citizen status in that music, but only a few people had really cracked it in a way. And, um, you know, my relationship to that whole community and that whole tradition was very serious. And, um, you know, that I think caused me to do some research into some zones that maybe had not been investigated that much. You started on trumpet and then eventually made your way into guitar. What caused you to flip that switch? My whole family's trumpet players. My older brother, Mike's a great trumpet player. My dad was an excellent collegiate trumpet player. My grandfather was a professional trumpet player. And I started on trumpet too when I was about eight. And as far as I knew, my my name was Mike Matheny's little brother because he was a very well-known trumpet player around. And of course, no little brother likes to be known as that. And, uh, you know, right around that time, given where I am chronologically, the Beatles were on the Ed Sullivan show. Me, like another trillion people, saw electric guitar as not just an instrument, but a whole sort of iconic representation of how the world was about to change and it did and my attraction to the guitar was because of that and um you know i kind of went there um pat this is one of the biggest festivals in the rochester area safe to say the energy here is insane just leading up to it uh you know what are you most looking forward to for the actual opening night well, there's a couple things. This band is a really good band. It's um, it's it's well traveled at this point. This particular lineup, which features Chris Fishman on keyboards and Joe Dyson on drums, uh, has joined me across the world over this last year. I think we've done 140 or 150 concerts all over the the planet. We haven't played together for a few months now. We we did have a break and Rochester will be right near the beginning. So I expect it'll have that sort of fresh energy that you get right at the beginning of a tour. And I'm really happy that we'll get to share that with the festival audience there. Well, we're all really, really excited. Hey, I wanted to ask you, um, just as we kind of wrap up here, you know, you started this journey as a kid, trumpet and then guitar. Fast forward now, you've had this incredible career playing alongside some of the most amazing musicians in the entire world. What do you think that kid who, you know, was was just the little brother of this really great trumpet player in school, what do you think he would make of this career? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of unbelievable that that kid would be, you know, really un, like would not believe it I, I i still kind of don't believe it myself to tell you the truth it's it's so unlikely in so many ways um you know but what i do know is that had nothing ever happened and that i did not have you know the incredible opportunities that i've had i would still be practicing you know like crazy trying to become a better musician my my goal was never the stuff around the music my goal was always music and um anything that has happened beyond just hopefully being a, a better musician each year has been just kind of unreal to me actually I, I i never planned for that i never even thought about that it was really just what can i do to be a better musician and you still keep that in your mind now, even after however many years and, and you know, uh, a very successful career, you're still thinking, how could I get better? None of that changed at all. I mean, if anything, I think as you get better as a musician, you realize how much better you could be. I mean, it's sort of like the onion thing, like you, the further you go, there's and you think, okay, I'm gonna get through this layer, and then there's another 200 layers there that reveal themselves. Music is a lot like that. And um, so, yeah, for me, it's it's exactly the same, really, except maybe more, because I also think that the better you get as a musician, the more fun it is, which makes you wanna do it more, which makes you discover more things. So it's, uh, it's kind of a, a cycle that I feel very lucky to have been able to spend my life uh, rolling around in. All right, Pat Matheny, thank you so much for your time today. We certainly appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you opening night at the Jazz Festival. 
My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you so much. We'll be right back.